Hello and welcome to today's training video which is where we're going to be looking at how to find and spot um, below market value or BMV uh, property deals in your local town. Now we've got a number of different property um, training videos on our website and um, some are kind of specific to this kind of similar training method where we're looking at how to use things like Rightmove and Zoopla on how to find property deals but on this particular video just to give you a bit of kind of context, uh, sorry, context and background we uh, ran a um, blog article a couple of weeks ago um, using the same techniques that I'm going to show you in this particular video now um, where we covered one of the local towns um, that's near us in an area called Chester. Now within that uh, blog article at the end we just made um, a couple of comments um, at the bottom of the page and just basically asked for any of our site readers um, or any of our clients that if you're maybe wanting us to do this video in your local town just to drop us a comment back a little bit about kind of who you are, where you're based, what you're looking to do um, and then we'll pick one at random um, and do one on probably a weekly basis maybe um, to so show you really how it can be done in, in any kind of town or any area. You don't need any kind of prior knowledge, you don't need kind of any prior experience in terms of how to find the property deals. What we're going to use is some specific um, techniques using Zoopla so that you can go out there and, and source property deals in your local town based upon kind of certain criteria but what we're really looking for is motivated sellers and that's what we're going to be kind of focusing on and um, using these kind of different techniques so we've had um, a couple of comments on the bottom of the training course so we've got one here from Tim um, as you can see here brilliant video looking for property deals in Birmingham um, three to four bedroom houses to rent as a multi-let uh, looking for an investment with good cash flow as opposed to capital growth um, so that's great so that's one area Birmingham uh, another one, Jane, is a great video, useful tips. Uh, thanks, Jane. Happy to do a video looking at S6, so Sheffield area, uh, three to four bedrooms to sell on to other investors. Perfect. So kind of a property sourcing strategy um, to sell on to other investors. And that's a great kind of cash flowing strategy as well. Um, so that can be kind of refurb or no work needed, no problem. And signing up for course this week, great stuff. And then Tyler. So Tyler's looking for refurb projects in Salford, Mosside and Rush Home. Um, so that's an area in Manchester uh, that we cover as well. Um, so we'll know kind of a little bit more about that area if we uh, if we pick that one. Um, something that can buy, let and refinance houses preferably. Perfect. No problem. So we've got Manchester, um, Sheffield and Birmingham. So a couple of areas there that we can just kind of choose at random. Go into, use these same techniques and show you really a little bit about how to spot these kind of particular deals really so looking at Zoopla and um, the main thing that we're looking at here as I said is going to be kind of motivated sellers now all of these properties that are going to be on Zoopla and also right move and stuff as well they're going to be on the market with estate agents now there's a whole host of different um, property sourcing um, strategies and techniques that you can use uh, we cover about 11 12 I think different ones in our uh, online training course as so that covers everything from um, estate agents through to um, newspaper adverts Gumtree uh, leaflet drops online advertising and a whole kind of host of other ones and estate agents and and this particular kind of method of sourcing properties via estate agents is just one element of it. So we go into a lot more detail in the training course. So um, I'm kind of limited on what I can show you in just kind of a, a quick video, if it were. But within this video on its own, there's going to be kind of techniques and methods here that you can use straight away to, to kind of go out there and find some deals in your local local town. So. So if we go to this website here, uh, random.org, we can choose one of the comments um, at random and see kind of which area we're going to choose. So put in one, two, three, and then click on generate. And it's come up with number two. So let's have a look at the comments down here. So we've got um, one, two, three. So Jane. Um, so yeah, so we'll do uh, Jane's area in this particular video. Um, so it's completely kind of... Um, chosen at random in terms of the areas that we kind of look at and the reason for that is because I just wanted to show you that we can as I said do this in any area really it doesn't need to be specific to an area we kind of particularly cover so I'm based in Manchester so the northwest and um, a couple of key areas around there that we focus on Sheffield isn't an area that I would typically kind of cover so it's not an area that I know um, too much about really when it comes to kind of property um, on the local kind of streets and postcodes and stuff but we can do this uh, as I said in any area so let's go on to Zoopla and then just put in some of the criteria so S6 is the postcode let's keep it as uh, minimum maximum because I'm not sure on the price ranges uh, just yet houses and 
two bedrooms. So three to four bedrooms to sell on to other investors. So let's look at three plus bedrooms and then search. So this particular strategy that Jane's looking to do is going to be um, known as property sourcing. So she's going to uh, sort of find property deals and then sell those deals on to other investors. Now with those deals, the investors that are going to be looking at those properties typically, depending upon their strategy, would either fall into the camp of maybe looking to do buy to lets in which case you'd be typically looking at slightly lower value properties because they would generally have a higher rental yield or they'd fall into the camp of maybe doing kind of a refurbishment and then a resale and um, so putting it back on the open market and those types of properties would work very well for first-time buyers or maybe next time buyers but first-time buyers again um, in nice or decent areas with kind of a, a suitable price range that's going to be achievable for a first-time buyer so when it comes to uh, doing this search so you, there's a lot more due diligence that you can kind of do to make sure you've got the right information um, and to make sure you're kind of narrowing down the area and we look at kind of things like heat maps and a few other things in other videos um, but I can't go into kind of too much detail on this particular video because we'd need more information in terms of what Jane's kind of particularly looking to do but if we're just looking at kind of three to four beds in the Sheffield location um, then there's certain kind of um, filters and tools that we can use on Zoopla right now to uh, to kind of narrow that list down. Now as we're going through this, um, you'll be able to do this a lot quicker than kind of I'm doing, so I'm obviously trying to explain it as we're going along, but it's a very kind of quick technique. It doesn't need to take up kind of too much time and things really. Um, so it can be quite straightforward in terms of how it's uh, in terms of how it's done. Now because we know that Jane's looking to sell these properties on to other investors, um, I'm just going to put in some filters uh, on here that would typically give us, I suppose, more suitable properties um, for, or that, that would typically work for, for most kind of investors, whether that's buy to let or refurbishment. So terrace houses and semi-detached houses will be your, your kind of main type of um, property stock, if it were, really. Price range, I'm just going to do... Um, change some of these filters at the top here so 100 results per page and I'm just going to check the highest prices just to see what kind of prices they go up to and then we can kind of filter them down so you've got some obviously high value properties um, in this location as well and then it starts to kind of reduce now if we're looking for investors if we assume that they are maybe looking at buy to lets, we'll probably need to drop this price range down to about 150, maybe even a little bit lower, just to kind of get decent rental yields uh, for that area possibly. So it's got 150 results at the moment, and let's see what that reduces it to. Okay, 104 results. So we've still got um, a decent amount of stock to kind of play with, and it's just kind of limited um, or kind of restricted somewhat the, I suppose, the focus of uh, what we're going to be kind of able to and um, wanting to kind of look at and consider first of all. So now we've got the search open. Now we've kind of chosen some filters. I've already signed in here, um, and the reason for that is so that we can start saving some of these properties uh, to our list. So the idea is that we're going to be able to generate a short list of potential property deals in this particular area. So we want to save the properties um, initially and then we can go back and, and sort of filter them out a little bit further. We can kind of cut out some of the ones that maybe um, don't make the grade second time around and we can kind of narrow down that list a little bit further. If you've got lots of properties or if you've only got one or two, um, then that's great. It's, it'll be give us a nice kind of tight short list to, to arrange viewings on. So there's four techniques that we're going to cover. Um, the first one of these is going to be looking at properties that have been on the market for a long period of time. So if we go down here onto kind of sort by, we've already kind of increased the results per page to the kind of highest level. That'll just make it a little bit simpler for us for um, searching. And you can choose kind of list view, grid view, and map view. Most of the time I use list view, and then for one or two other searches, I'll typically use uh, map view as well. But if we're going to be focusing on list view for this particular one, we're going to look at uh, recent listings. So if we go to most recent, and for this, we want to do kind of like a reverse search, really. So instead of starting at the top, we're going to start right at kind of the bottom and see which properties have been on the market the longest that may fit our criteria um, 
that we're looking for. So um, Jane's criteria is going to be three to four bedrooms to sell on to other investors, can be refurb or need no um, or no work needed. So condition of the property is not really the main concern at the moment. It's more really about the motivation that we're going to be looking for for the seller and properties that have been on the market a long time will generally have a little bit more of a, yeah, a motivated seller um, associated to them. Now one of the reasons for using Zoopla over Rightmove is that you'll have more information typically on the on the website than you get with Rightmove. You can get more information using Rightmove with um, added uh, plugins, something called Property B you can use and that gives you some more data sets to kind of play with um, but with Zoopla it gives you a lot of extra information as well which is um, which is great really. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to go too much into the detail of each particular property we're just going to start adding some to the shortlist and then we can kind of narrow it down later on but as you can see here you've got added on 9th of November 2011. Now the date of shooting this video it's the coming up to the end of um, 2014 so that's been on the market nearly three years if that's correct as in if that's had no kind of changes and stuff there now just because a property has been on the market a long time doesn't automatically mean it's a motivated seller uh, obviously if they've been on the market a while then maybe they're not too motivated but it is a good sign that something kind of might have changed during that time frame certainly it's got stale it's probably got old and a lot of people haven't maybe looked at that kind of listing as a fresh listing and it's just got a little bit kind of hidden in the background and these make great property deals to have a look at a little bit further because other investors might be missing out, other investors might not be looking into the detail of them. So it gives you an opportunity of, of kind of something to kind of look at. So three bedroom house, guide price 94,000. Looks like it might be, guide price is typically, um, usually if it's an auction property, so that might one might be going to auction. May even have kind of structural issues and stuff associated with it if it's been on the market that, that long a time. Might not, but just as a kind of, a, I suppose as a tip one thing we've noticed with properties that have been on the market a while sometimes they've kind of been on and off the market in terms of had sales agreed searches have gone through and then there's been a kind of an issue with the search something's come up um, and then they've gone back on the market because the buyers kind of pulled out so that it, there are things that you need to look at as a kind of interested buyer that will make it kind of uh, more or less interesting for you really but as like I said I'm not going to go too much into each individual detail here we're just going to look at a little bit more information and then kind of save it now just very quickly as well as a comparable if you're looking at these properties as a buy to let now without knowing the area and knowing kind of the postcodes and the streets um, at this stage you've got a three bedroom house on the market for 117 and another one offers a, a, a region of 80,000 now they're going to have very different rental yields because the rent income might be the same but obviously the price of the property is a lot higher so if you're looking to find a property to source on to another investor these types of deals are going to be much more appealing because they'll be higher rental yield they'll give more options for that investor looking to buy it so it's just something to kind of bear in mind when you are looking at the properties now we could save uh, each of these uh, again another guide price that one might be going to auction as well um, save that one we could save each of these listings up to a certain date and kind of add those in or if one's looking like it may be quite highly priced compared to the others then we can kind of leave those out um, so the other one's 95 got one for 80 94 and then this one's a little bit higher 117 so I'd probably leave that one for now it's not kind of jumping out on me price range um, wise in terms of making it more appealing than the others um, so we'll just see how we can kind of narrow down this list a little bit further Okay, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom. So again, October 2013. So you come into about a year on the market now. Um, again, there's more questions to kind of be asked. You want to be speaking to the agent and finding out if there's a reason why it's been on for so long. If it's maybe um, been on and off the market. If there's been any kind of situations changed. Any offers accepted. Um, any surveys been done or anything on the property yet there's a whole host of questions you can kind of ask again we cover those in the training course and I can maybe look at doing another blog for you that kind of goes into some of those and um, gives you kind of some options of, of what to ask the agents as well so I'm just going to add a handful here so you can kind of see the type of things that we'll add in um, and they're all around similar price ranges 80 to 100,000 um, Obviously, you've got some that are kind of a little bit higher. I probably wouldn't add these types of properties if you're looking to sell them onto an investor. Um, 
the rental yield is probably going to be a little bit too low for it. There may be other benefits in that property, and that it might be a, what you would perceive as a motivated seller. But if you can pick up a three-bedroom house for eighty-two thousand, or a three-bedroom terrace house for one hundred twenty-five thousand, you're going to have to negotiate very well on this particular property to get it down anywhere near these sort of levels. So. There will probably be a reason for that in terms of the street that it's on. The postcode is obviously going to be different and the area or the estate. But when you're looking for simply for an, a buy-to-let investment, you need to consider what the rental yield is going to be. You need to consider what you're paying for the property. And if you're sourcing for the investors, then those investors are going to be considering that information as well. So it's important to kind of take that into account. Um, so we're just going to save some of these kind of cheaper ones here, probably up to 100,000. And then if the list was quite short, I'd probably go back and maybe add some of the other ones. And now you're coming up to about April time, so we've been on the market for kind of six months. So I'd probably leave it there. And um, we've been on the market for less than six months, depends on how buoyant the area is. If it's a um that's quite a price one, let's take that one off. If it's a very buoyant area, then you're gonna be having property deals that have been on the market. Uh, quite a short space of time uh, before they get kind of proper sale agreed on it typically if it's a more stagnant area or it's kind of going up in uh, sorry it's kind of down in value or staying kind of quite stagnant prices are staying similar not much activity happening then properties will be on the market a lot longer as you can see here the, these ones have been on the market kind of a, a little bit of time so add that one and then if we just uh, we won't add any more now, we'll just kind of look at the dates in which they start going up. So you've got April, April, scroll up a bit further, May. So these are kind of obviously the newer listings all the way up through till uh, the newest kind of listings in October uh, 2014. So if we're looking for Technique 1, which is properties that have been on the market a long time, we're not going to kind of be adding these ones uh, just yet. It's just going to be focusing on the other elements. Next up, we're going to be looking at properties that have had very little interest from other investors uh, or other property buyers. And that is kind of, or um, well, the way in which we check this is how many times the uh, property listings have been viewed. And again, Zoopla gives you this data, which is great. So you'd go to sort by, use the most popular uh, filter. And then you can see here, viewed 500 times in the last 30 days. So that's obviously quite a popular property. Now, if we scroll down, and again go to the bottom of the page we'll look at all the properties that have had uh, very little interest in the last kind of 30 days and these are the ones that are gonna be worth certainly having a look at a little bit further and um, worth doing a viewing on worth certainly speaking to the estate agent on at least because they're not going to be getting much interest from other property buyers um, as you can see here they've not been viewed that many times so typically they're not going to be having many viewings in terms of actually at the property probably not had many offers put forward so if the seller is motivated um, they're going to be even more motivated when they've had no interest in the property so these can be very good um, deals to kind of have a look at a little bit further now again just being conscious kind of at the price point in terms of what we would maybe wanting to be finding properties at if we're sourcing them on for other investors 142 for a three bed might not work um, it might work obviously you just need to know a little bit more about um, kind of change criteria in terms of price ranges and stuff but the area is right three to four bedrooms is right looking to sell on to other investors um, is right so let's kind of consider uh, if we're looking at maybe rental yield as a focus then we're going to be kind of wanting to buy it at a decent price so that one's not too bad viewed only 45 times in the last 30 days certainly interesting enough to kind of add to our uh, short list of potential deals really and then if we click on page one and again, just scroll right down to the bottom. So it's kind of almost like a reverse search, really. And we'll start to see kind of a few more properties that maybe look a little bit more interesting. So viewed 56 times in the last 30 days. Let's add to that. Uh, that one's a little bit pricey, yeah, so we'll ignore that. <coughs> uh, four bed, one for 68. So it's favourite, it's an interesting one. So as you can see here, we're just trying to kind of add a few more properties to our shortlist. Now there's no um, 
right or wrong way to do this in terms of like a perfect target so if it's been viewed less than 90 times add it to the list if it's been viewed more than 90 times don't it's not quite as um, simplistic as that I guess or even as detailed as that we're not looking at kind of uh, trying to pinpoint a number on it because each area is going to be different and it not only that it will also change so Sheffield might be different in the years time than what it is now and that's because it might be a bit more buoyant or it might be a little bit quieter in terms of the activity happening in the market so you just want to compare it basically with the data that you're looking at at the moment so if all of these were showing up as viewed only 30 times in the last 30 days and even the ones at the top of the list we're going to be saying something similar then that's pretty much what the market is so it's not like the ones at the bottom of the list are going to be standing out but these ones that have only been viewed sort of 30 times 40 times 60 times in the last 30 days do stand out when you've got properties a little bit further up the list that have been viewed 160 times 170 200 times 234 times so hopefully you kind of get a feel of of what we're looking out for trying to spot motivated sellers trying to spot properties and sellers that aren't getting interest from other buyers um, and are therefore hopefully going to be a little bit more motivated because they've not got um, those offers on the table they've not got the viewers ha viewings happening and also the estate agent as well will be kind of quite interested and quite keen to work with you on them so third technique we're going to be looking at most reduced so if we click on sort by most reduced very simple again so just keep it on the list view and this is where we're going to be looking at two factors so we're going to be focusing on the biggest price reductions and also the last reduced date so so we're, we're kind of October 2014 so near the end of 2014 now so any recent price reductions in the last probably month last four weeks are going to be quite interesting so that's a recent price reduction and it's a decent price reduction as well so 15.4% 110,000. Now, if we're only focusing on properties that are kind of under 100,000 for our criteria, if that was part of it, um, based on kind of what we were looking to do with the property, then obviously we wouldn't be adding this to it. But if our criteria is going up to 125, then it's it's certainly interesting. Um, so it's certainly one that we would kind of add to that list. So last reduce this one, 10% reduction. Last reduce on the 30th of September. And it's under a hundred thousand so that's an interesting one so again on the hundred thousand is just a price range that I've put in for this kind of search that we can see which properties might fit best for selling on to other investors um, nine percent it's not a bad reduction uh, but it was last reduced in March 2014 so how motivated the sellers might be they've had no price reduction for six months um, but they've probably not had a lot of interest as well for that six months and nine percent would be over that full period of time so that would have been on at one point in time for maybe 110,000 um, or around that kind of level and it's had a price reduction probably been on the market for quite a while as well um, I'd probably add that actually because it's uh, it's been on the market for, it's not had a price reduction kind of recently and it might be being missed by other investors and now it depends upon the other kind of criteria um, and also the other property prices around that particular one whether we keep it in the short list and whether we go to view it eventually but I'd certainly uh, I'd certainly add it for the list at the moment so all of these are looking kind of over 110,000 mark and then so we get half down here so only a 5% reduction last reduced uh, in July this year so a couple of months ago and it's only been a 5% reduction since it came on so that's not probably interesting enough at this stage for me to add to the um, add to the criteria we might pick it up based on other criteria that we look on next but based on just price reduction alone I probably wouldn't add that one just yet if you were looking again just bear it in mind with how competitive you are in terms of the area if you were looking in the market and this was at the top of the list there'd been kind of hardly any price reductions and your kind of first ones are coming up at five percent then yeah I'd probably add it but when you're looking kind of halfway down the page and it's not uh, five percent is probably quite standard you got a couple of kind of three percents as well but you've got some higher ones which you've already added to the list and um, then it, it doesn't interest me as much those ones and um, because they're a little bit kind of lower down for what the market is saying for that area and um, hopefully that makes sense and then the fourth technique we're going to go on to map view and we're going to be looking at 
simply uh, just the price differences between the properties within a, a very kind of um, narrow area so if we scroll down in this particular region so you can see most of the properties are kind of focused around this um, kind of part of Sheffield um, on our search probably based around our price range but these super icons are properties that are on the market that we haven't added the ones that are kind of the uh, stars are ones that we've saved to the lists already now what we're going to be doing here is just clicking on the lists or clicking on the properties and just really seeing if there's any that stand out based purely upon the uh, price range that they're currently on the market for so this one's on the market for 120 and this one's on the market for 90,000 and they're quite close in terms of proximity and um, this one's on the market for 120,000 150 120 145 115 and 140 so there's some quite high value properties there and then you've got this one kind of out on a limb for 90,000 and then you've got obviously one we've already saved for 82,000 but because the other properties around there are quite higher values I'd definitely add that one to the list it's interesting enough to have a look at further on um, certainly and then we just do the same we just kind of replicate that search across this map and click on them and just really see if there's any prices that stand out so again this one's on the market for 150,000 and one just a couple of streets over on the market for 75,000 130 125 135 so again this one is well worth adding to our um, shortlist and seeing really how that kind of matches up later on when we do a little bit more digging so I'm just going to speed this up now go a little bit quicker um, but hopefully you can see really the criteria that we're kind of looking at just to see if any properties jump out at us because as we saw before one was on for 75 and the rest in the area were on for kind of up around the 120s a little bit higher as well so you've got two around 105 mark one there for 125 one for 145 so they'd probably interest me um, it's a little bit higher than 100,000 kind of target that I kind of set on the other properties that we're looking at but the other ones around it are quite high 120 sort of 5,000 plus and you've got two here that are a little bit kind of lower um, so they're worth adding to the shortlist especially if we've not got sort of hundreds of properties adding a couple more will just give us something to kind of play with really when it comes to focusing our uh, efforts on viewings later on so that's that's pretty much it we can kind of go and, and look at we've skipped over some of these ones higher up the map and, and we've skipped over some of these ones kind of down here but hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea in terms of kind of that fourth technique of what we're looking out for so just to recap we've got four different techniques that we've used there in that Zoopla kind of um, video that we're using different filters for so the first is looking at properties that have been on the market a long time the second is looking at properties that have had very little interest the third is looking at properties that have been reduced recently and for a decent level as well and then the fourth we're looking at kind of price differences within those particular kind of neighboring streets and, and local properties really and the whole reason behind this as I said uh, earlier on is really just about shortlisting some potential property deals now if we go to Zoopla oh, sorry my Zoopla favorites and then that'll give us a list of all of the properties we've kind of saved there so within so we're up to about 30 minutes in this video now and as I said it's because I've been kind of talking and we're up to about 10 minutes before we kind of went too deep into the search but you could probably do this it takes us about 10 minutes now um, to do it in the areas that we kind of cover um, and you can do it quite quick in any area once you kind of understand the different criteria they're looking at so you don't have to spend a lot of time on it you're just trying to create a bit of a shortlist and, and trying to kind of narrow down the uh, potential options for the properties now if you were particularly looking for refurbishment type properties or properties that are already in good condition then this is where you can go into the details 
look at some of the pictures look at the descriptions and further filter out how many properties you've got because on that very quick search there we've got one two three four five six About 21 properties um, in our kind of short list really so it's not a bad number to go at if we were looking to do viewings on those obviously take us a couple of days or a couple of weeks to kind of go around all of them so it's not a bad thing to kind of narrow it down further or to maybe create a couple of priority lists so one which is going to be your main priority for that week and then another one which is going to be your second priority if you don't find any deals that are going to be kind of uh, just up your your street <laughs> if it were um, one way to kind of narrow that list as I said is you click on pictures descriptions see if it kind of ticks all the boxes that you're looking for another way is just by focusing down via the estate agents so as you can see here Haybrook quite stands out with a lot of these properties so if uh, Saxon Mir has got a couple uh, but Haybrook has got the majority you'll see your first point of call really would probably be phone call to Haybrook or arranging a time to go into the branch having a chat with one of the negotiators seeing some more information on the properties asking the right questions getting the right information to try and make sure they are motivated sellers making sure they do kind of fit the criteria for you and that's not a case of just going straight to the agent and saying um, is the owner of Lawton Terrace a motivated vendor <laughs> will they take an offer on the property and um, there's more subtle ways to ask there's more kind of um, less indirect questions that you can ask that will get you a lot more information as well um, if you want to see those questions or if you want an idea of what questions we kind of asked there just drop us a comment in the section below the video and I can kind of put some of those in for you we go through all of these different elements in the training course we have kind of um, crib sheets and, and checklists and stuff of what you should do and what questions you should ask what you should look out for on viewings and things like that and um, within the training course as well so more than happy to uh, just give you a bit of an insight on some of those questions and hopefully it'll kind of help you along if you want to see that as I said just yeah feel free to comment in the video um, on the sections below the video and I'll, uh, I'll get some of that information over for you but hopefully you found that video helpful um, hopefully you found it helpful as well uh, Jane obviously is going to be for your area so you can hopefully use some of these properties um, in your next kind of search but if you wanted us to do one of these videos for your local town as well um, we're probably going to be doing one a week for the next couple of weeks so just um, put a comment in the section below the video again just giving us an idea on uh, who you are what sort of things you're looking out for what areas you want us to kind of focus on and then we'll do a, a random kind of choice as we did with this particular video um, next time we do the video probably next week and then we can yeah try and get some uh, hopefully some property deals for your local town so again hopefully you found that kind of video helpful any questions don't hesitate to ask and look forward to catching up with you soon